guys. Okay, so it's 11-11 and it feels appropriate that I make a video today because it's a special day, right? 11-11 is a very special number. We all love that number. I actually saw the time at 11-11 today on 11-11. What was I going to do? Did I make a wish? Did I... Did I feel the infinite powers of the universe just blast into me? I actually just just smiled, is basically all I did. But I did feel very good at that time, today, at 11.11 on 11.11. It happened for me. <laughs> anyway, I don't, I don't know that I want to just channel a message... I kind of want to step away from just channeling messages and actually talk a little bit for once. I'm not sure exactly what I'll talk about. <laughs> is this video keeping up with my mouth? Is it doing it? I hope so. It seems like it is now. Okay. Anyway, so give me just a moment here. It's a lot harder to just talk about normal life stuff than it is to talk about spiritually related things. Because I actually have to, to focus in on what, what is something unexplainable going on in my own life. And if it's unexplainable, then it's hard to define, you know? It's hard to really talk about things like that. One thing that has been going on kind of in the background of my life is I've been thinking a lot about praying mantis aliens. And I haven't I haven't done a lot of alien channeling and I've kind of stepped away from that side of my life, sharing that side of my life. Mainly because it was transforming and I didn't really know what was becoming of it. I didn't I didn't really want to keep moving in that direction myself. I was really starting to get intertwined more with the spiritual side of things, not the alien side of things, but angels, spirit guides, and doing this journey work. So um, I've had all types of different alien experiences, but where where do they exist? Do they exist in this physical reality, or have they existed in like an astral reality, interacting with my energy field, interacting with my third eye mind? So how do you interact with alien beings? It's easy. It's really, really easy to interact with alien beings. You simply kind of, you open up your heart. You have a trigger place. You have a location that you want to um, experience that connection with. You're already infinitely connected with all times, all places. It's easy stuff. So you, you feel out a location. Well, I really feel connected with Andromeda. And I really feel connected with the Palladian beings. I really feel connected with fairies. I really feel connected with, with Archangel Michael. Now, where do you want to go? Who do you want to connect with? It doesn't matter if it's an alien being or a spiritual being or another human being on the other side of the planet. Are we, as human beings, are we psychically developed enough to, to really know who's, who's thinking about us on the other side of the planet or who's trying to talk to us? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, but alien beings that have a little bit more expansion, have a little bit more sensitivity, they can feel these things out. They actually might get a feel that somebody's trying to talk to them and then they go into that vein of, of frequency, that frequency feeling, and then they see you and then they connect with you and now they can have a, a direct, direct relationship with you. So how do you interact with a, a place out in the stars? It's all frequency based. It's sort of like I want to pick up that radio station and I'm trying to get the right frequency. Well, as human beings, we just move the knob and then we try and dial it in, right? But when it comes to psychic interaction, you use your heart portal. You use the, the frequency of love to, to um, touch, to connect with um, an intention. An intention that comes from the heart, an intention that comes from the soul. So you dial it in through your feelings um, and you really feel out there and then the echo, it goes out there and then it bounces back. There's echoing that's going on here. And then the echo comes back to you. And the more you do this, the more you're going to start feeling more and more closer connection, more and now it's starting to touch. And now you're starting to have a one-on-one a -on -one frequency. And it happens in here too. You can actually see what they look like in your third eye mind 
and you can feel talking to them in your heart portal and and then it just sort of it's sort of like a, a language that works with energy and pictures it's not a language that works with um with the language although the language the words that we speak can also translate into feelings too and sounds and frequencies as well that also can be translated so i could actually talk to an alien being in english but um, the biggest, most impactful interactions take place when I, I don't speak at all, when I actually show them how I feel and and show them what I saw um, today in the memory. And then I, I explain how it feels just through feelings and through pictures of what I saw. Um, and then I try to define how it made me feel through the feelings themselves. And then I just pause and I wait for an echo to come back. And then you have to allow yourself to just stop and then allow the interaction to come back to you. If you keep talking, 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 then you're never going to have a clue what they have to say back. So you just stop and then the interaction comes back to you in here in pictures and then in your heart and feelings and you start to travel through the images with them and with the feelings and then you start to learn things. Is it easy? <laughs> not really, not exactly. Energy speak is what I call it. It's energy language. It's energy speak. So it's not always easy to have a clue what they're trying to say. <laughs> um, also, it's sort of like a goldfish trying to figure out a human being. So sometimes I feel like the goldfish and they're like the human being. They're like the more expanded understanding. So for me, I'm still like trying to figure this out. Um, but you feel the connection. You know you're having an interaction even if you can't fully translate it. So you just keep working on it and you just see where it goes. But it's always an energy-based thing. Anyway, was talking about praying mantis alien beings because I I have some I make weird noises on a regular basis. I, I do a lot of very weird things. I try to act very normal, but I'm a very strange person. And I love I love to wake up in the morning and usually there's some sort of a paused moment and then something happens and it just makes me laugh. It just makes me laugh like something hysterical is going on and I don't even know what it is. On the other side of the veil, something really funny is happening and I just start laughing. I have to do it. And it happens in the shower too, where just something is happening on the other side of the veil, and they're they're like they just make me laugh. They just I so I just start laughing and giggling, and then I just get so excited and I can't stand it. That's what happens. That happens a lot. I, I laugh a lot on a regular basis. But what am I laughing about? <laughs> Something invisible that's really funny. I don't have a clue what the joke is, and it's freaking making me laugh hysterically. So that's just one thing, right? Well, I make very odd noises all the time. I make very odd noises all day long. I'm not even going to demonstrate because <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but clicking noises, I make clicking noises all day long. I click um, inside myself on a regular basis. I, I can't always follow conversations um, before I just need to be internally clicking and making odd noises inside myself and then I just venture in other places and then I come back to conversation. <laughs> so I'm all over the place. But um, this clicking thing started to get really noticeable in, I don't know, I guess the summer of this, this year started to get like kind of noticeable a little bit. A little bit, I, I don't know why, but I kept thinking about praying mantis beings and um, I felt like this clicking noise was really related to them, but I didn't go a whole lot further. I've had some weird experiences. I, I've had weird experiences my whole life, but I don't, I haven't been talking a lot about the other stuff that goes on in my day to day. Um, I haven't had any praying mantis experiences since probably September was the last time. That, that was just so very weird. That was very a very weird experience that happened. And just a minute. I, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to tell you or not tell you. <sighs> hmm. I'm just pausing for a moment. So the reason I brought this up was I was having a walk the other day and my life has been really pulling me down to earth and helping me feel really grounded here on the planet. 
And I've been really enjoying the feeling of, I feel like I'm, I'm more like 90% in my body. Whereas before, I, I know this sounds very weird, but I felt like I was living my life like 40% here and 60% not here. Like, and I don't know if it was because of all the hard times I'd been through. I mean, my life has been a devastating challenge for years and years and years. It's a miracle I'm still here. And it's a miracle that I'm just so freaking happy and naturally happy and just a joyful person. I've always kind of had that gift somehow. I've always been really positive my whole life, no matter what happens. I just always think positive and stay positive no matter what it looks like. It's lying to you. If it looks really bad, it's actually just a joke that's lying to you. It's not actually that bad. So you tell yourself that even in the worst of things for years and years and years, it's still just a really funny joke that's happening right now, but it's not actually real. I'm just somehow experiencing it, but it's not actually real. It's really fucking hilarious. <laughs> that's how I keep myself sane in a fucked up world. You just see it as a big joke, right? But it's it's actually really happening, but it's not. It's all an illusionary thing. Well, anyway, I've made it this far. And, um, and this year has been interesting because I feel like I'm becoming more and more solid. Um, just solid um, with all the experiences that I've been having all the way up until this point. I've been feeling really solid with my life and with my direction and with my purpose. Um, really solid with all the hurts and the wounds of my life have been filling in and I feel like a solid person. I don't feel like I have any bruised and broken wounded aspects inside my spiritual atmosphere. I, I keep looking for them. I keep searching for them. I keep trying to dip in to heal more stuff but I don't have any odd echoes like I've been enduring for so many years and I don't know how to heal it. Now this year I've been feeling more and more solid and I was on a walk a couple days ago and I was looking up at the stars. I do that a lot and um, I was just talking to the universe about how happy I feel being so totally grounded in the earth and in my body and I feel like I'm actually here living my life for the first time. I don't feel like I relate to any version of myself that I've been all the years up until this point. I feel like I'm starting a whole new lifetime inside of a life. And I've, I, I've often said this to myself where I feel like I've lived several lifetimes in one life. And I don't really relate to the person that I was even at the first part of this year. Things are changing this sort of spiral and shift of this of society or human ascension or however you want to define it It's real. It's really happening and I find myself more and more disconnected from the chaos of what was and really feeling like I'm a part of some new experience where there's there's people coming out of the woodwork there's there's real um, joy real spiritual people finally having a voice finally feeling promoted finally having that opportunity to be themselves it feels like things are happening people are finding their soulmates and their twin flames finally after all of these years of loneliness things are happening people are inspired to write books people are inspired to go um connect and and do do totally new things with their lives on a spiritual basis um, people are starting meetups. There's lots of spiritual meetups. There's there's more in the movies and in TV. There is more appreciation and support for um, for you know black women and um, g gay couples and you know just just anything that would be a racial um, indifference that would be an issue 20 years ago is starting to totally evaporate. I'm starting to feel like we're a people that is coming together and appreciating each other. All the different colors, all the different um, sexualities, all the different ways that we're expressing ourselves. I feel like we're becoming a rainbow that is starting to become more and more vibrant and it's happening happening this year. So again, on this walk and praying mantis aliens, we'll get there, I swear to God. Um, I was talking to them about all of this, um, about all the ways that I've been feeling so grounded and so earthbound and so happy and so disconnected from what was and how I'm seeing the world change and I really feel this ascension thing is real. I feel that people are starting to not be afraid to be themselves. And the world, the bigger picture of the world, um, even television is starting to support that as well, which is a big deal because we're all influenced by the media, you know? So in this way, I was talking to him about how I kind of missed the alien universe. And I missed those interactions 
but on the same time, at the same time, they were starting to become too hard to interpret, and they were so distracting me from having a human life that I needed to separate from that for a while. I needed to be here for a while because it kind of became an escape thing. You start to to realize that unconditional love is real and it's so easy to access at any time in any place because it's always out there. Can, unconditional love is always out there, but it's very hard to experience it here on earth. And in that way that I'd been suffering from depression for all these years, that I, I'd endured it, but it, that I f was separated. I felt separated from society. I felt cast out. I felt invisible. I felt underappreciated. I felt all of these things, but I didn't really want to be appreciated. I just wanted to be just understood or just a part of the world in an equality setting. I just, I didn't really compute with the societal structures. Um, but in that way, I got really sucked into communicating with, with love that existed out there and not love that existed here. It was actually YouTube and my, my website and starting to do all these psychic services that's really been helping me to connect with human beings and bringing me to earth again and helping me to appreciate and to see that love is here on earth, is here in every one of you guys, is here in me too. And we have to acknowledge every day that love is here, that you are love too. And that if you are love and I am love and the other YouTubers subscribed to my channel are love, that's a lot of people that are love right now, you know? And we forget to acknowledge that there is a lot of love right here. There's a lot of love in our communities. There's a lot of love across this globe. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of people supporting love right now. But back to the conversation, I disconnected from the alien world for a while, and um, obviously Avery was my best friend. Avery, the human alien, has been my best friend for a very long time. He sort of helped me survive um, this, this sincere misery of my suffering and the world, and, um, and that just sort of transformed into something unexpected. And it, it just, I just felt like it was time to move on, you know? Anyway, that's a whole other story, and I think one day I'll probably talk a little bit more about that. But as I was walking those couple days ago, I was really thinking about this and how I miss the alien universe and how happy I am here on Earth, but I don't feel like I'm a person that just lives on a planet. I feel like I'm a soul that lives in a universe. And if I just live here, there's something that feels unfulfilling about that because I want to be expanded out here and beyond here. I want to exist in all places, and I want to feel the love that exists in all places. And I was thinking a lot about the clicking noises and the oddities that I can't really put my finger on. And, you know, I was thinking a lot about just the general conversations that people have about galactic families. And... Um, they have about, you know, their, their uh, galactic roots, so to speak. And, and I was kind of th thinking to myself that, you know, if my soul could relate to any sort of species that we are aware of um, near our planet, I think I would be like a praying mantis alien because they're so sweet and they're so loving and they're so positive and they're so, they, they, can, they always bring, bring harmony to the sorrow, right? They always... They never, they're sort of, um, they're really insistent, they're persistent in being like a warm sun that never stops shining. And it never stops shining no matter how sad a person could be, it keeps the, the warmth going, you know? And I feel that a part of me is really like that. It's, it's something that I, I choose to say I love myself for being this way, you know? Do you, do you ever try to put your finger on something that makes you really special and actually give yourself credit for it and say, that is one thing that, you know, that, that I am really proud to have that trait and really proud to know that that is a special gift that I bring here to this world because I definitely bring positive energy to this world. And I think praying mantis aliens are really, really remind me of that too. 
Well, anyway, I had uh, uh, the clicking noises and the praying mantis beings in my mind, and <sighs> I had some other interesting experiences this week. Um, there's more I would like to share about the praying mantis beings, but I'm going to tell you this other part first, okay? So a couple, a couple days ago as well, this has all been this week, kind of intermixed into this week. I had a moment where I woke up in the middle of the night, I think this was three days ago, and I felt the most warmest, most sincere, most perf- most powerful love energy inside of my heart. And it just, it was like I was surrounded by heaven. You ever wake up and have a moment where you feel surrounded by heaven and you just have so much gratitude for that? Do you ever have that? I know we hear a lot about the evil tears in the night, but what about the beautiful moments where heaven just envelops you and you just want to cry and you just want to say thank you you just want to say i'm so glad this is real and then the next day when you wake up fully you sort of look back and it's kind of like an odd dream you know what was that about and why did that happen I had that happen um, that one night like three days ago and then i was thinking about the praying mantis alien beings which I had kind of an odd sort of, I woke up and there was an odd echoing thought that happened in my mind that it wasn't um, the right time to be talking to praying mantis beings, um, that it would just distract me. There was something about it would be a distraction. And, um, but I just sort of, you know, I, I accept whatever comes in my mind, I always accept it. It, it. You know, is it the truth? Is that really what they're saying? I don't know. So I just accept it and I let, I just roll with the punches, you know? I don't believe everything that I hear inside of my brain. <laughs> I just let it be as it is and then we just see what happens, right? <laughs> anyway, so then the then last night again i had um i woke up to the most warmest most beautiful love energy and it was it was like a it was like so it was almost like a like in our human world we've manifested drugs in order to to bring about the illusion of heaven it's not real it's not real it's a lie so you inject a lie into your body and now you experience the illusion of heaven for a moment and then you come back to your body and then it sucks you know that's a lie that's not real love that's not what heaven actually is like that's just a lie that you're putting into your body and then you're believing it for a while and then you want to you get addicted to it so even this I I started to I was I was um translating it. I was I was reading it. I was examining it more. Um and it I, it was so odd because it was almost too good to be true, you know? It was almost like some sort of odd astral drug that was like pure like pure love, but was it real love? It was too amazing to be real, you know what I mean? I had some very, I, I, after that, I didn't know what to make of it, you know? I'm not, I I want to believe that, that it was real love, but it was so pure. It was different than anything I'd felt before. So what am I supposed to tell you about that? All I can do is tell you it felt like this. This was the experience, and that's all I know about it. I might just have another weird experience in the middle of the night, and it feels the same, but I learn another thing about it. It's sort of like life is made up of all of this learning, but you never really know what the full story is until you get to it. And it could take years and years and years before I get to the full story of what does this mean? Who is um, sharing this energy with me and why is this happening? You know, what does it mean? Is it a beautiful thing? I'm always contemplating. I'm always asking the questions, what does this mean to me? Is it is it better for me to be embraced by pure love in an astral world in the middle of the night or to wake up in the morning and embrace my life as a human being and how do you live in two worlds at the same time i can't as a human being process all of the information that exists in my day-to-day life i can only process so much so how does my heart become that expanded and then I can somehow conquer it in my own mind by, by just allowing it to just be as it is. 
sometimes being a goldfish and accepting being a goldfish without logically trying to make sense of everything is almost the best way to to accept the experiences you know sometimes when I don't get it, I mean, obviously you're probably watching this and like, oh my God, you, you had that experience and you're asking these weird questions. Why aren't you just so thankful? I am freaking thankful. <laughs> I'm very thankful. But I also need to understand. I also need to explore what this means to me. It's a different version of love than I had ever felt before. Um, I don't know what else to say other than that. And I'm also going through a lot of deep thoughts about who am I, where do I exist, and how do I want to live my life? And how do I want to share wisdom that's truly influential to people? Do I want to just channel? Do I want to connect with alien beings and bring that wisdom to this world? Do I, um, am, is it, am I prepared for that? Am I ready mentally and emotionally to, being, to having those experiences? When you start talking to alien beings, those conversations always seem to happen at like 2 a.m. in the morning. They can also happen during the day too, but you're going to be distracted by it all the time. It's going to be a whole new experience of what love is, and it's going to totally alter the way that you perceive being human. It can even have you not wanting to be here to such a degree that you're only living in your body like 40% of the time because the rest of you is constantly projected to other places, talking to other beings, and you're not, and it's just a different way of living life, you know? So, give me just a moment here. I don't have, I don't have a specific way of talking about any of this stuff, but I thought, you know, if I do an 11-11 conversation, I... I don't want to just channel. I don't want to just talk about soulmates. I don't want to just, I actually just want to talk about real life stuff, like what my real life is actually like. Um, I think people appreciate hearing it in this way every now and then. So <sighs> give me just a moment here. I'm just going to pause and collect myself. I'm just checking. I just want to, I'm, I'm actually doing a psychic thing right now. I'm actually, I'm, I'm pulling all of the parts of me back into my body because I've been, I've been all over the place, um, in this conversation. So I'm pulling it all back inside it and I'm, I'm aligning my frequency. I'm aligning myself. That's what it feels like. I'm bringing myself back together again. And then I'm coming into a straight line. I start to feel energy going down my feet into the earth and then branches of energy then kind of stretching out like a tree. And so that's that's what I'm collecting myself here. I'm rebalancing my energy field. I'm connecting with the deepest part of my heart and soul. I'm going deeper than the superficial conversation as a human being that I don't understand. I just want to talk and share. We all do that. We all just want to just talk and share. So this is some sort of deeper thing I'm going into right now. So in this deeper part of myself, I see a smaller, younger version of me, like a childlike version of me. The essence is so perplexed and confused about what love actually is and what love truly means to me. Showing me through the eyes of this childlike version of myself, even crying and saying, you know, saying through, through showing me many images of memories of being broken hearted time and time again in so many different ways having expectations and realizing the only way to truly be happy in this world is to not expect anything good to happen. And that was my motto, is I learned to just not expect anything good to happen. So if I don't expect anything good to happen, I can never be heartbroken, right? So then you become accepting of all things. Does that truly manifest warmth inside your heart? Um, just choosing to see life and to be in, a, in that belief system. Does that actually manifest warmth inside your heart or is that a survival technique? Are we all in a survival technique and wondering where is love? Because I always thought love was like this. 
was like this candy this sort of this sort of it tasted like candy i swear to god it was so pure the love i felt this morning was like tasted like candy it was but it was so sweet it was so heavenly and and it's confusing because where is that love truly exist and how does that love impact my life on a day-to-day basis as a human being how do i live in two worlds at the same time This small childlike version can feel lost and confused. Because it's so easy to long to have that love all day, every day. But having to, as an odd version of an adult, accept that that love is already here It's just here in a way that I don't experience it on that level. I have to just believe that it is here and then continue to be that expression of love for everybody else. So I can help remind them what true love actually feels like and what it's like to have that in your life. In this way, I stand on the edge of the earth and I look up into the universe and I say, when will love of this kind exist here in a place where we can believe in it, where we can trust it, where we can dance in that love morning till night and not feel like we're living in two worlds. From this universe, comes frequencies of light that enter into my heart. I'm still like a child being held. A very beautiful woman tells me everything will be okay. Sometimes you have to simply remember that it's okay to feel small. It's okay to not have all the answers. It's okay to feel like a ping pong ball sometimes and wonder what to do about this. It's okay to not try so hard. It's okay to just simply take a deep breath and relax. I feel a lot of tension leaving my spiritual atmosphere. As this child, I ask the woman, I say, what is it about these praying mantis beings? I've been thinking about them a lot lately. She giggles and she says that I'm bored of seeing humans everywhere. That's why I love diversity so much. If I could only see a praying mantis walk down the street, I could finally breathe. That's what she says. She says, I long to see this earth covered in creatures, covered in different intellects, covered in different frequencies of love and understanding of the universe, a galactic federation of earth. But it's not about the words, it's about the frequencies of interconnected love, of creations that are vast and uniquely different. And I am so supportive of diversity in this world. It's like, come on already, human beings, come on already. See how beautiful we all are. See how beautiful we are when we are expressing ourselves as balanced versions of love that can go go be go be in love with the same you know same sex couple kissing in public. I mean, let's just let's just welcome these things already. Because when we welcome diversity of this kind, we welcome love, we welcome acceptance of everybody. Now we welcome in these beings of pure love that are totally different than us totally different than us now they too can walk alongside us now they too can hold our hand now they too can show us the universe in a way that we've never seen it before 
because now we are opening our heart we are welcoming change diversity we are welcoming love and evolution she is saying to everybody who watches this video to think about this conversation and how you are accepting of diversity or you are not ready yet to accept diversity are you ready or are you not ready yet if you are not ready yet it is because of you that this earth cannot expand to the outer reaches of the universe but it's not she's not saying that in a mean way because we all develop in our own time some of us who are ready have been ready for a very long time and we are tired <laughs> and, and in that way even impatient but the magic is still something we experience every day we just long for the universe to be a part of our earth home we miss that we long for that reality it's been too confining it's been too quiet around here it's been too too much of the same black and white stamped out houses and black and white personalities and not welcoming creativity and color She is doing energy work for me. She's helping me to fill in the gap. So it's not like I just feel here or I feel there. I feel all places. There's some sort of odd energy gap I've been feeling lately. It's what she's showing me. She's also showing me that a life of time of broken hearts has also sort of made it confusing as to whether or not I could trust pure love or not trust it. I, she says, I'm just, I'm a human being, just like you, just like everybody else. It's very natural for us to have issues with trust. And whether or not we, we can believe love of that kind is real. And if it is real, then how can we trust that it will always be there? Maybe it will go away. Or maybe I, I missed it. Maybe I didn't quite understand it right. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it wasn't quite the way I thought it was. That's just human nature. It's human nature but she shows it for me on a much different scale because I'm working with frequencies that are invisible. I'm working with people that are invisible. I'm working with communication with planets and times and places that are invisible. I don't always see everything. I feel everything. So I feel stuff going on, but I don't always know what it all means. I'm a human being. I'm not the master of the universe. I, I am working on that. I am a master of the universe in training. <laughs> I will be working on that for the rest of my life. But where I'm at right now is pretty damn good in comparison to a lot of people on the planet, right? <laughs> I'm probably in the 5% bracket here when it comes to expanded awareness, spiritual enlightenment, alien interaction, <laughs> all of that stuff. So, I think this is a good place to start, or to start. It's a good place to start. <laughs> is it a good place to start or a good place to stop? You see, there is no end, there is no beginning, so it's just a good place. <laughs> I'm so funny! Okay, all right, I'm just going to say that I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I think I'm going to make more videos just to talk about stuff. I've got a lot up my sleeve. And um, I'm going to be making more videos with Joe. That was, that was the first time I made a video with him. We actually have seriously awesome conversations, but it's a little odd. 
when we've got a camera on us and we know we're going to be sharing it, I was, I talked way too much. I need to shut up and let him talk more. <laughs> so we're going to make more videos to practice this. Me shutting up and him talking so you can get to know him a little bit more. And then also our friend Keiko, she is awesome. She's adorable. She's sweet. She's from Japan. She has a Japanese YouTube channel, but she um, she's just started a YouTube channel where she's going to start making English videos. Um, so you should check her out. She doesn't have any videos out there at this moment, but she's making a video right now as I'm making a video. So, so you don't even know this, but Joe, Keiko, and I, we are all making a 11-11 video at the exact same time. So I don't know what their messages are about, um, but we're all doing it at the same time. So um, check out Joe's channel. He'll have a video uploaded tonight or tomorrow, probably tonight. Um, so Joseph Bradley, spiritual healer and teacher, is his YouTube channel. And Keiko is going to have a video uploaded probably tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> it's late. You don't know, but it's 8.28 p.m. right now. Um, and my bedtime is in one hour. One hour. I, I'm like clockwork. When 9.30 happens, I, I start to phase out and I get I crash. But I'm a morning person. I like mornings, but uh, evenings, I'm just, I'm done skis. <laughs> I'm done skis at an early hour. Um, but anyway, Keiko, check out, um, definitely check out her YouTube channel. Um, keep your eyes peeled. She's going to have a video out there. Her channel is Divine Angel Place. Um, and there's a little bit more to it. So if you just search Divine Angel Place, you'll find her. But she's, it's also, um, we create just created it today, just so you know. Divine Angel Place, um, Wisdom from Higher Spiritual Realms. That's what it is. So check them out, okay? And we're going to be, we have kind of an idea, and it's an idea in progress, but <clears throat> we're going to explore um, us three doing a video together just to talk about spiritual subjects. Um, kind of like, you know how they have those sh women's shows <laughs> where there's like a lot of women celebrities around a table and then they just talk about a subject and it's kind of gossipy and it's a morning show. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but I, I that's the one that keeps coming to mind. But it's going to be kind of like that. It's not going to be gossipy, though. We're just going to talk about spiritual stuff as we experience it and just bounce conversations off each other. Um, so it'll be a really fun way for you to get to know me versus Joe versus Kate because we all have different personalities um, and it's really fun to just just talk um, just about anything anyway uh, so I just wanted to share that check out their YouTube channels um, also if you're interested in ever connecting with me one-on-one -on -one, um, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com I do, I do psychic services. I got a heap of psychic service options out there. Um, and that includes energy work because I'm a hardcore feeler. So I feel things out. I do journey work. Um, and then I, it's transformative. It's energy work with wisdom. Um, and then also, if you want to just ever talk about a spiritual subject or something going on, um, I do 15, 30, and 60-minute just let's talk sessions. Um and then too, I do psychic mentoring. So uh, check me out, and um, I guess that's it for right now. I hope you're all enjoying this special day, and um, have a wonderful evening.